This is so cool. You were here yesterday. Yo. Wow. That's what he's thinking too. Wow. Daddy's car, right? <laughs> wow, right? Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> no way. Cool. This is this is something that I have seen in other countries. Yeah. But I've never seen anything like this in the US. Yeah. What a cool spot. So are all of the garages here this size? Some are bigger, some are smaller. And everyone's done their own. Basically when you buy it, you just buy like a unfinished shell, comes with a mezzanine, and everybody does their own interior decorating. So it's cool, everyone's got their own style and decor and cars. And so, then if you wanted to, you could actually live here. Uh, no, you can't live here. Oh, you can? Yeah, that's part of like some of the restrictions. Yeah. Got it. So, so they this have, is like, more of just a garage. It's a garage. It's like you can, and you can't really like do like crazy maintenance on here. They said like light tune up work. So if you need to do like an oil change or like rotate tires or something, that's cool. But like you can't come in here and start grinding and welding and put a dyno right. inside. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> yeah, you, you can't have like a cherry yeah. picker or a lift. No. Well, you can do a lift. Oh, you, you can some do guys, a lift. Some guys have lifts in their, in their units. So you can do lifts. Right, because you could do oil changes. Yeah, and, and like some so. guys just need more storage so they have lifts. Jay. Right. Hi. What a place. This is so neat. Yeah, so it's kind of like right place, right time on this. Uh, you know, I saw that they were starting to do something here. They started to like advertise this in like 2019. And I was like, I don't know, man. It just seems like a, seems like a really expensive type like man cave, right? But then mm -hmm. I thought about it, I was like, this is perfect for my business. You know, I can store my cars here, do some marketing, you know. It's five minutes from my house, so. Right, because versus getting like a house and building something. Yeah, or like, like this all my cars property. are sitting in my warehouse in Ontario and I have to worry about like transporting it there and stuff like that. Let's go downstairs. Oh, you got one of my books here. Yeah, yeah, you remember that? Yeah. That is awesome. That is so cool. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. The this is this really is a nice man cave. So yeah, I mean, I, you, I could sleep here. That does have a bed. Like it's like quote unquote what you're allowed to do when you're not supposed to do. The rules here is very like, hey, we're all car guys. We all like the same. Shit. Don't f up for everybody else. So do what you need to do, but you know, just be mindful of what you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. so that's kind of how everything. Happens. Yeah, it's it's a good thing going for yeah. for you guys. Y you so, I can't believe how much space is here. There's so much parking too, and so you can have meets. Yeah, you can. So they do, do they car do, events. They do cars and coffee twice a month. The one at the beginning of the month, like the one yesterday, it's always themed. So yesterday was like classic Porsche. They'll do a classic Mercedes. They'll do like a classic. Um, they did like Volkswagen Beetles one uh, last time. They'll do like a truck and off road. So they do a lot of different different events. So then you wanted to build it this way. So I bought mine from the developer. So after they were all sold, and I was kind of looking for one, he was like, hey, I'll sell you mine. It was already done. I just walked right in. So this is all kind of like, this is probably like one of the more like modest units. Some guys have gone insane and spent like millions of dollars inside their units. Really? Yeah, like one guy did like full brick, the whole thing from top to ceiling. Like arches and like crazy sconces on the wall. And I mean, it's pretty wild what some guys have done in their garages. Like a serious man cave. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but this is already crazy. You, yeah, this you is could, nice, you know? If you wanted to, you could fit a lot of cars in yeah, here. Yeah, if I wanted to like really just parking lot it, you know? Like yeah. the guy across, he has maybe like, his is a little deeper than mine. He's probably got nine cars in there. But it's like, how hard is it to get to one car, right? You have to move yeah. everything out of the way. Like this is, and plus this is my whole car collection. So Technically, if you, if you really wanted to, you could probably do a triple car stacker. You could probably do yeah. three of them. One, if you really uh, wanted the to. The guy next to me, He's got a pretty cool thing going on. He's got a one post lift, and then he buried the platform underneath the concrete. So he can still put his cars all diagonally underneath, and then he can just move out of the way and then back in one car, and it's literally like eye level to this balcony. Mm. This is such a staple of any car collection. Bear brick. You have to have a bear brick. <laughs> 
Yep. It's your size, Jay. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been collecting bear bricks for a while. Just a few. I don't have like a crazy collection or anything like so, that. So then do you bring clients here? Do you yeah, bring I friends start, here? I, yeah, I have like meetings here. Um, Cause you know, like my business is in Ontario. If you've already been there before, you don't really need to go. Like it's a lot more convenient to come meet here. What's nice, cause we're owners, we can come 24 seven. This place never closes, right? You have access all the time as your place. Even the clubhouse, if we want to access the clubhouse and have a meeting there, it's open 24 seven. Do you have so, like a group chat going with all the other owners? I know a few, we don't really have a group chat. That's probably a good idea. Or maybe I'm not included. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like, I think for me, there was also like a little bit of a component, like when I'm probably the youngest owner here, a lot more of these guys are like in their 50s and 60s and 70s, and I'm the kid with the modified cars, you know, and they're probably like, well, who the hell is this guy? But no, they've all been pretty, most of them have been, been pretty receptive to like, you know, my cars and what I do and kind of understand the business. And, you know, there's a little bit of a vetting process, like when people sell, other owners want to know who's moving in, right? right? So you don't want to bring in like some, yeah, Crazy and they operation. don't want to like attract any heat towards what's going on here. You know, yeah. like it's a, a lot of these guys are private. You know, some guys are more private than others. Some guys are here more often than others. Some people enjoy the community of Finish Line more than others do. So it just kind of you know depends on what you're doing. So, right. but uh, yeah, no, a lot of guys have some really cool car collections. Let's let's take a look downstairs. Yeah, let's go downstairs, Jay. Come on. Ugh. How many units are there? There's right now. There's 32 units. Oh, it's more than just this area? It's this and then the door, you know when you came in the gate? Uh -huh. There's units on the outside. Oh. So all those were doors. So there's 32 units, but technically there's 29 owners because some actually took two and made one big one. Nice. Like this one right here, this one that's straight in front of you is 7,000 square feet. Oh, wow. And he's got a huge car collection. In there. And then how many square feet is yours? Mine's 2,000 on the ground and 200 on the mezzanine. So what I don't, that's fine. That's I mean, I guess I like guess it. it doesn't really yeah. make sense for because this almost feels like wasted space. This being like the alleyway or whatever. Uh -huh. That and it's not even closed. It's just open, right? Yeah. There's no the there's outside. no door there. There's no there's no fourth wall on that wall. What an interesting structure, though. So that's the John Wayne Airport yes. right there. That's the runway. Yep. It couldn't be more of a perfect place for car people. Yep. Right, because you can make noise. You can start your cars in the middle of the night if you need to. Yep and no one's gonna complain because the airport's right there. Yeah, and I mean, I've been here at four in the morning before going on a road trip or dropping a car off at 2 a.m. It's just nice to be able to have your own space and it's just car guys, you know? Yeah, and then so there's a clubhouse too yep. where you can hold events if you need to. Exactly, like uh, you can rent it out. Uh, you know, Kenny, who's the manager here, is super chill. And um, yeah, so they have like a nice clubhouse upstairs with like a pool table, a shuffleboard, there's a bar, nice lounge seating, a few TVs. Downstairs, there's like a conference room. All right, let's talk about yeah. the elephant in the room or the yeah. 959 in the room. Yeah. This one is probably one of the most infamous 959s for really not a good reason, right? <laughs> yeah, so, that's correct. This car was on the way to Mecham, I believe in 2018, up to Monterey to be auctioned, and it crashed. It actually was in a single enclosed trailer, and it came dislodged from the truck that was uh, towing it up there. And not only that, it doesn't look like it was actually strapped down properly inside the trailer. The thing went flying, the trailer went into the bushes, the, the 959 went flying through it. Literally a tree, it hit a tree like right here in the front. So yeah, there's videos of it online um, kind of showing the damage. It actually still got auctioned. Apparently nobody had insurance on anything. <laughs> the tow truck driver didn't have insurance. The 959 wasn't insured. Nothing was insured. This whole front end was crunched. The in. whole front end. Yeah, all the way through the wheel and the whole hub area. I guess they've auctioned it off and it got a little bit less than half a million dollars at auction. Completely wrecked. So the buyer who purchased it gave it to SV Auto, uh, Simo Verahanta, who's also the same builder as my 911, which you have featured before. Yes, so um, if, if you guys want to watch the video on this, build this thing is so insane very extensive beautiful build the csf 911 the same person sv auto restored this yes from the ground up and now it's almost like a brand new vehicle pretty much so he just finished this like last week it took him about three years to restore and you know the thing about building a 959 not a lot of parts available yeah and so he's had to fabricate a lot of his own parts with his team um, 3d print a lot of parts a lot of trying to just source random parts from all over the world of whoever has it so it was quite a lengthy process and 
you know, I've known Simo for several years now. He doesn't cut any corners. Everything he does is, you know, A plus, top of the line, super meticulous. So, um, and you can tell. I mean, you look at the body panels, the gaps, everything on this car. It's done like perfectly. The paint job's really nice. So he he he's done a fantastic job. So we actually just debuted it yesterday here at the car show. Oh really? Yeah. Is that's why it's here? Yeah, that's why I was here. So for the air cooled classic car show, uh, we we uh, debuted it here. Amazing. Has the owner seen it at all? I don't believe he's seen it in person yet. Really? Yeah. What a car. I've never seen one in this condition. It, it just, it really does look like a brand new car. So he repainted everything. Yeah, he repainted the whole car, uh, fixed everything mechanically. He's, I mean, it's running better than it probably ever has. You know? Can I so, open it up? Yeah, absolutely. So the interior is all original. He's, he didn't do anything in terms of like upholstery or anything like that. So that's the exact original interior. He just put it all together. Um, well, he had to take it apart, uh, obviously, just to kind of fix a lot of the things that had happened to the car. Yeah. But yeah, it's all original interior. So then that means at least it didn't get damaged on the interior. Yes. It was just all external damage. Yeah, it was all mostly like front, uh, right, um, damage and then everything that kind of happened with that. But there was some frame damage, you know, the car had to be straightened. I mean, there was, it was quite extensive. Right. It makes me wonder at the end of the day, if the, if the new owner saved money by buying a wrecked version. Well, I think the biggest question, you know, me as an enthusiast is like, okay, so what is this car really worth? Is it worth the same amount as a 959? Is it worth more? Is it worth less? Like, I think that's something that the market would have to dictate because you know there are people restoring this stuff like Canapa and like other you know huge 959 builders those cars get you know what they're worth and I don't see why this wouldn't either I mean if anything this is built to that level or better so incredible so I'm assuming because uh, Look at that, he had to change so much stuff and update so many things in order for it to look uniform, I'm, I'm assuming he had to touch a lot of the car. Yeah, I mean, and all of this stuff is like refreshed, ready to go, you know? So, I mean, he painted all of this properly, he changed all the hoses, he changed all the belts, you know, he's obviously taken the engine out and like done everything he needed to do. Yeah. Um, because this whole thing was like engine out, everything's gonna get repainted, everything's gonna get redone, you know? It looks like a brand new car. It is so clean. Unbelievable. What does it make you feel when you look at this thing? You know, I've never been like so intimate or up close with a 959 and you know, because Simo and I are friends, I've seen him been building this for the last couple of years. So now that to see this in this condition and understand uh, you know, how much work really goes into restoring this, it gives you an appreciation. You know, mm -hmm. like 911s, like the, we're talking about the aftermarket, our aftermarket community is there and you can get a lot of everything, right? Whether you can get an original part or an aftermarket part, but this is a total different skill and dedication to being like, hey, we're not gonna cut any corners and really kind of restore this to like brand new spec. I mean, I'm looking at like a pretty much brand new 959, right? And uh, I think it's just a testament to his team on you know, just the dedication and him himself for like, hey, we're gonna nail this. Mm. You know, it's the first time he's, like, he's done this, so it, it looks like it came out pretty nice. It looks so good. It yeah. just, just really is crazy how clean everything is, is, and it really is a brand new car. I love that interior too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a cool color combo. It's so, it's so good. Things I love about anti-gravity batteries. Lighter weight. Restart feature with remote key fob. Doesn't leak. No corrosion on the terminals. Longer life, faster, more efficient charging, more output. Get yours at antigravitybatteries.com. Let's talk about some of the other cars that you cool. have here. So I've had a chance to feature your 996 Turbo, yep. which honestly is, I think, still my favorite. It's a roof R Turbo. Yep. Inspiration build. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we, we did this for Speed Hunters. I mean, God, it must have been 10 years ago now. You so know? long. It feels like it. 
Um, this this front end is the best part. It's yeah. so good. It's Minerva Metallic Blue. I believe it's the only 996 uh, ever made in this color. You don't see a lot of this color, period. You know, I haven't necessarily been driving it a lot just because I've been kind of more focused on the 911, but, uh, you know, we are going to take this to Lift to Colt for the Air Water Show oh, in cool. April, so we'll bring this out. It's, you know, it was the first nice car I ever got, and, you know, it's not going anywhere. I love the, I love driving the car. You have a 996 Turbo. Yeah. Like, the analog feel of the vehicle is just something that I I think is hard to replace. He can't wait to drive it too. Yeah. Yeah. He's trying to get in it right now. I so, know. Yeah. I honestly, my car is the Canyon Carver. Yeah. I mean, you could see my car is so chipped up because yep. I take it out and I drive it hard yeah. and it's a lot of fun. I think that's what they're for. But it's good that you're putting a lot of miles on this thing. This thing is yeah. incredible. Yeah, so I've been putting a ton of miles on it. Uh, I took it on the Overcrest Rally, which was like, you know, a thousand miles over two days. Uh, it's got about 3,500 miles since I built it. Yep. Yeah, it's his car, huh? Uh, <laughs> and uh, I love it. And, you know, Simo uh, and I, and even got Joey from Emotion involved recently to do, uh, you know, the tuning of the suspension. Uh, it's an ever evolving process, right? Like, you can always make your cars more refined, better. And I feel like, we've now like nailed it to what this car is like really all about. So yeah, I'm really enjoying driving this and just kind of learning its limits and learning all the characteristics of the car because it's a totally different animal driving an air-cooled car versus, you know, something with power steering or, you know, more assist features like a newer one. So then you, you have obviously your product, CSF, yep. radiators uh, in your 9 and 6. Do you have... CSF products in this? Yeah, so, you know, really I built this car as like a showcase of all of the new like air-cooled oil cooling that we're doing. So there's uh, a several different oil coolers on the car. There's one in the front. So we make all the oil coolers that fit like specific, you know, RS or IROC style bumpers when guys want to modify that look. We also have like the classic like right fender Carrera style oil cooler that goes right here in the passenger wheel well. And that is, um, you know, that's something that's standard on all G-body cars. And this, this is one of the coolers? Yes. You can see all the rock chips that that's taken too. So, yeah. but that also I mean, is, like you said, a thousand miles, or you've put a lot more miles. I've got about 3,500 miles on the car right now. Let's talk about these. Yeah. So then Keep M5, yes. RS6, yes. these are monsters in their own right. Yeah, right here. so these are like your, you know, your big boy fast V8 sedans. Uh, I've had this car since about 2015. I just love the color combo. You know, it's a Molo Red, which wasn't a standard color on the F10 M5, so it was an individual paint. You know, this is tuned to about like 640 horsepower, pretty much like a full bolt-on type build. You know, my charge coolers, cold air intake, a tune, uh, exhaust, downpipe. Yeah, because of our, a lot of people who don't know, you guys don't just do radiators. Yeah. You do charge coolers too. Anything cooling, right? Intercoolers, charge coolers, oil coolers, radiators. We want people just to kind of know, you know, everything that we do. I love this car. It was great. Uh, you know, it's got a PSM Dynamic Aero kit, you know, wheels from 660, and it's got KW uh, Haas kit for the, like, just the good ride height. Red Enzo did the whole... Um, radar laser system in the car as well and yeah it just came out came out really nice i've gone through like six front lips so <laughs> you know it's pretty low yeah and uh i keep calling the guys over at psm dynamic to get more front lips you gotta you just gotta roll with the look it looks so good and what's going on with this this one is i've had this for like a couple years uh it's uh, a c8 rs6 it's 2021 it's another very rare color. It's called Goodwood Green. So it's pretty much like a uh, British racing green, but it's got metallic in it. So, you know, my style is always like, I don't need to buy a new car because I'm gonna avoid the warranty within 10 minutes of having it. <laughs> so let me find like a really nice, like lightly used, but newer car. So I bought this car, the car only had like 5,000 miles on it. And the guy was on the East Coast. I was kind of looking for a green RS6, got connected to the right guys. He had already done some pretty cool mods to the car. So it's got European headlights and taillights. The entire inside of the car has been Euro spec. So it's got the Alcantara headliner, grab handles from an S8, uh, flat bottom steering wheel. I put Lamborghini Urus like billet shifter paddles on it. And there's like a cup holder mod that you don't get in America, it's only available in Europe. So I just did a bunch of like small things to it. And uh, really looks nice. It's got the um, radar and laser like 3D printed like in the top 
kind of matches the whole look of the car. That's also a Redenzo. You have quite the German muscle car collection yeah. here. <laughs> Like so this all German muscle cars. Yeah, yeah. so this, is, uh, this car makes about 800 wheel, 1,000 torque. So it's got a stage two VF engineering hex tune on it, even Turi cold air intake, our um, intercooler. So there's one on each side, on each pod, Kropovich uh, downpipe and exhaust. So it's just a full bolt-on car. A lot of guys want to do more. They want to do upgraded turbos or build the motors and stuff like that. I'd like to build my cars to like right before it gets like unreliable for like daily driving. You know, that's always been where I need to be with my vehicles. And I feel like this is kind of a good, a good look. It's got um, the CT lowering module on it. So I can, with my phone, adjust the ride height. I can even slam it into what they call show mode. And then it's got the Titan 7 wheels. So those guys have been good friends of mine. Um, so these are the TC5 spec. They actually made me these wheels in bronze, which you can't buy. So they made me like a one-off bronze for the car. Which is, uh, which is pretty cool. I love the look. It almost gives you like that Advan GT look, right? And that's something that I felt like was something you didn't see on this car and I, I really like how it turned out. Um, all the aero on the car is from Urban Automotive in the UK. So the whole carbon kit. Cheap hers. Yeah, it's nice, huh? What do you what do you think realistically? It even smells new inside. Yeah. 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 What do you think? How much do you think this is worth? There's no way to tell, huh? Knowing how he builds cars like SV Auto and the work that's gone into it and how much the restoration actually cost. You know, there's only like two hundred and something nine five nines out there. So if you want one, I mean the market I guess is what someone's willing to pay for it. And I don't think there's not somebody in the world ready to pay at least $2 million for this car. $2 million. $2 million. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because this is it is essentially better than new after yeah. he's oh, gone through it. Yeah. yeah. Brand new. The paint's flawless. You know, the interior's in really good condition. And, I mean, the odometer's only got 3,600 miles on it. So I don't see why... I, w I mean, if you took this to an auction, like there'd definitely be a couple guys interested in this. And then, you know, at that point, it just depends on who's got the bigger, bigger. <laughs> Plus uh, it has checkbook. a very interesting story. I think the story matters a lot. You know, I think now, and you know this, like in the world of like car culture, everything's so fast with social media and content. Like if this was in my museum, it'd be more of a story. Hey, let me tell you about how I got this car and what this car has been through. You know? Yeah, there are pictures of it all wrecked yeah. and everything. Yeah, but uh, from what I'm told, uh, the current owner is not planning on selling the vehicle. So he's going to keep it. I hope he enjoys it. Yeah, and from what I'm told, he's also going to drive it. Oh, perfect. Yeah. That's even better. So I think he's planning on driving it. And uh, yeah, I don't think why you wouldn't. You know, yeah. I mean, I would love to drive this car. And uh, I think it's done really nicely, you know? So cool. Thanks for showing us your yeah, garage. Yeah, absolutely.